was a great fight for me uh, to be able to go through some adversity like that and uh, be able to come back and you know get on my feet and uh, you know not gape out. Um, I think it says a lot about uh, who I am as a fighter. Oh, for sure. Did you feel like that after it was over? Like this is good for me. This adversity, the fact that I got through the fire. Like, what was your? I mean, you must have been very satisfied with the outcome, of course. But like, as uh, when uh, do you sit back and analyze your game that way, saying, "Well, this is good for me mentally, just to, to have gotten over that serious, uh, you know, s serious situation where Gonzaga tagged you a few times." Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely, and um, you know, I still consider uh, Gabe, you know, one of the top five heavyweights in the world, and uh, absolutely. And compete against him. He's very skilled. Uh, I think he also has that, uh, you know, the power to knock somebody out in, in one punch or, you know, have obviously one kick. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> to be able to go through that fight and, and come out the way it did, um, it takes a lot of pressure off my shoulders and, and knowing how I can approach a fight. Now, coming up, this, this fight with Brock Lesnar, I've read on the internet, I mean, tell me if this is true, but I've read that you're going to be stepping in the octagon somewhere around 290 pounds. Um, well, I started camp at about that weight, but uh, right now I'm down to about two. I was about 278 last night, but um, really I like to fight around 260 or, or even 255 because I feel a lot lighter on my feet, and I, you know, I just feel like I can move better. Yeah, you look a little uh, ballerina at 250. <laughs> so 250, I feel so light on my feet. <laughs> that's huge. I want to spring through the daisies. Even I'm only 250. Even for six foot three, that's huge. Oh. Well, have you ever seen uh, the X Men? You ever seen the Juggernaut? Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. Shane Carwin looks like. He looks like a real live Juggernaut. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is an awesome fight, man. I can't wait. I'm so yeah. pumped up about this fight. Woo! I I know it's one. You know the fans are excited to see, it, and they've asked for it. And uh, you know Brock and I are both uh, the biggest guys in the UFC right now. And uh, you know, like you said, similar backgrounds. It'll be like two grizzly bears uh, attacking each other in there. Man, Maybe burly. How do you how do you prepare yourself for that, man? That's got to be a, a freaky feeling in your head, knowing that you're going to face a guy who's very much like you. Uh, you know, yeah. If it's, you know, I'll tell you what. When you get into the UFC, um, all the heavyweights are tough. Every fight is tough. So I, I just approach you know all the fights the same. You go in there. You do the best you can, and that's all you can ask of yourself. Now, what a lot of people don't realize about you, Shane, is that you are actually a full-time engineer, and you take time off for fights. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, very different than most people at your level, at the elite level of the game. You're you're one of the only guys that I know of that keeps a full time job while you know while you're at this level. Uh, yeah, and you know I think in ways that it, it helps me. It uh, it separates me from uh, fighting uh, throughout the day. So you know I know a lot of these guys go home and that's all they do is they watch fighting or sit there and think about fighting. And uh, for me, it's. Uh, a good opportunity to get into work and get some things done and, and use my mind and, and be around uh, people that are down to earth that, uh, you know, really don't talk about fighting that much. That's very interesting. You know, um, it, may, uh, it may very well be that, you know, it helps your mind, you know, gives you another uh, another outlet. Absolutely, I think it does. And, uh, you know, I think it's beneficial for me. So, um, you know, it's something that I love to do as well. It's something I went to college for was to become an engineer. And uh, I'll tell you what, that was the four hardest years of my life was in school of mine. With my nose in the books. That's hilarious. Dude's a cage fighter. He's like, <laughs> not as hard as school. <laughs> well, he went to the best school yeah, here. That's how you know how hard your school is. Cage yeah. fighting's yeah. easier. <laughs> what got you into cage fighting? Um, well, uh, well, he's an I NCAA wanted... Division II national champion. He's a yeah, national uh, champion yeah. wrestler. I was a runner up a couple times, and then um, Ron Waterman trains out of my hometown, and uh, he had asked me to come in and, and work some wrestling with him. and, and work on his uh you know cardio and stuff and uh he instantly got me interested and i would say within about six weeks he had gotten me a fight out in the wec and that was when it was in uh, the more california on the indian reservation wow that's crazy i think there were more fights in the crowd that night than there were <laughs> <laughs> yeah you haven't really seen the dark roots of the mma culture until you go to one of those indian casino mma shows yeah you know, it, with, like, it was thomas wildman denny's headlining and there it's just chaos yeah, it's absolute chaos outside. Uh, you know, you, never, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, oh, yeah. Just walking through the parking lot, you like you have to have... You don't, you don't go with one dude. You bring like three, four dudes, and everybody's going to like look around. <laughs> I'm Keep your eyes open. I'm picturing a scene out of From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Those Indian casinos can be scary. You know, the little but, weird uh, ones. Mm -hmm. The people from California are a little bit more crazy, too. They uh, cheer for blood and, and guts a little bit more than the rest yeah, of the Yeah, they're, they're they, ready to die. They hate life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're living out in Riverside, you, you know, you're living out in the middle of nowhere, Meth County. 
You know, there's a lot of big sections of California that are just infested with meth. It's very, very bad. And those are the places where they put those MMA shows. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. They set them up right there. Uh. But listen, Brock Lesnar is a, is a huge challenge. And uh, if there's a man to step up to the task, I think it's you, Shane Carwin. I think uh, this is an awesome fight. I'm, as a, as a fan, I'm super excited. As a commentator, I can't wait to commentate on it. It's an amazing fight for the title. Was it in yeah. November? What is the exact date? Is it 16th? 21st. Uh, 21st. Yeah, 21st in, in Vegas. And it's going to be on pay-per-view. Yeah. Woo! Get, get to fight in Vegas again, and uh, that's always exciting. And uh, I'm just looking forward to the fight, man. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped, and I'm excited and ready to step in there with him. Yeah, it's a very exciting matchup, man. Really, the, the whole MMA world is a buzz of this. Because uh, this is the first time Brock has ever had to face a guy who's that dangerous. It's a, it's a big big test, brother, and good luck to you, and I, I can't wait until uh, November. I can't wait to see that fight. I appreciate it, man. All right, stay healthy, man. Good luck in training. Hey, thanks. Real quick, I just want to say uh, on uh, <clears throat> November 7th, uh, the fans here in Colorado can come up and uh, check me out at Max Muscle in Greeley, Colorado, and uh, you know, I'm more than happy to see all the fans say hi. You know, and, uh, I wouldn't be here, Matt, without the fans. So come up and stop and say hi. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Take care. Cool. We got ACDC up on deck and more of the Joe Rogan Show on KBPI. 1067 KBPI. There are certain bands where if you don't like them, I can't talk to you. You don't like some classic ACDC? <laughs> you can't be fun to hang out with. You know what I mean? Oh, I have a confession to make. You don't like ACDC? I, the little... I am a said effer, the real word, um, with the stupid little shorts and the stu- the little voice, something about him. But like I love Back in Black. <laughs> I just don't like him. Well, there was two different singers, right? And they yeah. one, the first guy died, and he was the bigger guy, and then the new guy came along. I just, right? I just, it was never my thing. Eh, I'm sorry. It was never your thing. Never my thing. ACDC. <laughs> some people get it, some people don't. Well, you don't want to listen to it all the time. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like chocolate cake. You don't want to have chocolate cake all day long. You'll get sick. Sometimes you you like key lime, yeah. But every now and then, you just slip on dirty deeds. <laughs> da, da, da. Come on. There's certain there's certain bands. You know how like certain bands like like I, I have a friend who who hates the Grateful Dead. And if you like the Grateful Dead, he he will get angry at you. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know those. Dudes? He would hate Boulder, right? Oh yeah, he Ooh. would hate Boulder bad. He would hate it hardcore. He's one of those dudes you can't tell him the Grateful Dead is good. You, he'll get angry. <laughs> that's you know, awesome. I don't, I don't like the Grateful Dead, but I understand it. I mean, yeah. I see that you like. Okay, that's cool. I'm Besides cool, ACDC, what else do you like? I listen to everything. I listen to a lot of a lot of stuff from when they were doing a lot of drugs. That's my favorite music. Like Pink Floyd, yeah. Led Zeppelin, like the Led Doors. Led Zeppelin, The Doors. The, yes. all, I mean, and people don't want to categorize it like that, but there's a reason why a lot of the music today is not as good. And it's these guys aren't doing psychedelic you know drugs. What? I, I, made I mean, that, that's true. I made that point once, and we had somebody's father email me, and he was very angry. He says, mm. my 13-year-old son's in a band, and you said that the best music's written... Yeah, it's true. Uh, because Red Hot Chili Peppers, okay, yeah. when they got off the dope, yep, not so they good. fell off completely. They lost their edge. I'm not saying you not need totally. to do drugs they to make good music. They still have a music. few songs that I really like, but it's a different kind of energy. Yeah. There's a wild, crazed energy from the release of the ego. There's there's something to, like, Whole lot of Love. I, that's my number one favorite drug song, because I maintain that you cannot make that song without drugs. You ever <laughs> listen to that Led Zeppelin song, Whole Lotta oh, Love? Absolutely. There's a minute and a half. Can we play that? Is that possible? Yeah, we yeah, have there's a minute and a half portion where it's just sex sounds and like symbols a minute and a half in this catchy song oh, this yeah. song is super catchy and then when it comes back at three minutes and two seconds into the song the the guitar comes back and mm-hmm. it's the the best riff in all of music the best riff i've ever heard ever i mean this is this is just this epitomizes that era this epitomizes the psychedelic drug era to yeah. me you need you don't hear music like this anymore. And the music that we have now, it doesn't last as long. Even yeah. if you like it, you really like a song, you get sick of it a couple years later. This song is like 35 it's, years old, maybe what? more.